Have you ever wondered why the Korean Peninsula is divided into North and South Korea? A question as complex as the history it stems from. The story takes us back to the aftermath of World War II, when the world was trying to find its new balance. The Korean Peninsula, once occupied by Japan, found itself caught in the middle of two emerging superpowers. In the wake of World War II, the 38th parallel became an unlikely stage for a grand geopolitical chess match. The Soviet Union, a titan of the communist world, exerted its influence over the northern part of the peninsula. Here, the seeds of a socialist regime were sown, gradually transforming the north into a mirror of Soviet political ideologies. Meanwhile, the United States, a beacon of capitalist democracy, took charge of the southern half of the peninsula. Under their guidance, the South adopted a political structure that echoed the democratic values of the West. The contrasting ideologies of the North and South, superimposed by their respective superpower patrons, set the stage for a tension-filled stalemate across the 38th parallel. This division, however, was meant to be temporary, but as the Cold War chill deepened, the provisional line hardened into a permanent divide. The two halves of the peninsula, bound by geography but split by ideology, grew further apart. North Korea, under the leadership of Kim Il-sung, strived to build a self-reliant, militaristic state. South Korea, under the leadership of Syngman Rhee, aimed to construct a democratic nation bolstered by a market economy. These opposing visions further fueled the tension between the two halves of the peninsula. Despite the growing divide, both leaders shared a common ambition, the dream of a unified Korea under their respective political ideologies. This shared dream, ironically, became a catalyst for the conflict to come. The tension on the Korean Peninsula was about to boil over into a full-blown conflict. On June 25, 1950, a surprise attack changed the fate of the Korean Peninsula. The dawn of this day marked the beginning of a conflict that would shape the course of history. North Korea, armed with Soviet-supplied tanks, launched an invasion into South Korea, crossing the 38th parallel. The North Korean forces, well-trained and heavily equipped, rapidly advanced, leaving South Korea and its allies reeling from the sudden onslaught. The world watched in alarm as this aggressive act of war unfolded. The United Nations, an organization still in its early years, recognized the gravity of the situation. The UN Security Council convened in an emergency meeting, condemning North Korea's actions as a breach of international peace. It called upon its members to provide assistance to South Korea, marking the first time the United Nations intervened militarily in a conflict. The United States, a key member of the United Nations, responded swiftly to the call. President Harry Truman, deeply concerned about the spread of communism, authorized the dispatch of American air and sea forces. The goal was clear, to halt the North Korean advance and restore peace to the embattled peninsula. Other member nations followed suit, contributing troops and resources to what became a multinational force under the banner of the United Nations. Yet, the situation on the ground remained dire. South Korea's capital, Seoul, fell to the advancing North Korean forces within days, intensifying the urgency of the international response. The UN forces, led by the United States, arrived in South Korea in July, facing a formidable foe and a daunting task. The stage was set for a war that would last three years and take many lives. The Korean War, a conflict that began as a civil war but quickly escalated into an international confrontation, had officially begun. This was a war that would test the resolve of nations, reshape geopolitical alliances, and leave an indelible mark on the Korean Peninsula and beyond. The war was not just a domestic conflict but a stage for international power play. The Korean War was a seesaw of victories and defeats that tested the mettle of both North and South Korea and the international forces that stood with them. In the beginning, North Korea seemed to have the upper hand. The North Korean forces with their surprise invasion, had a clear advantage. Their initial successes were swift and decisive, capturing Seoul, the capital of South Korea, in just three short days. The South Korean forces were caught off guard, and the North Korean army seemed unstoppable as they pushed further and further south. However, this was not a battle they were fighting alone. The United Nations, led by the United States, swiftly intervened, contributing troops and resources to the South Korean cause. A turning point came with the landing at Incheon, a strategic masterstroke orchestrated by General Douglas MacArthur. The UN forces launched a surprise amphibious assault, cutting off the North Korean supply lines and forcing them into a hasty and disorganized retreat. 
This counteroffensive pushed the North Korean forces back up the peninsula, all the way to the 38th parallel, the original dividing line between North and South. The UN forces didn't stop there, they pressed on, crossing the 38th parallel and advancing into North Korean territory. For a moment it seemed like the tide of the war was turning in favor of South Korea and its allies. But as we know, in war, fortunes can change in the blink of an eye. Despite the initial successes of the UN forces, the battle was far from over. The North Korean forces regrouped, bolstered by the support of their allies, and prepared to fight back. The tide of the war seemed to be changing but not for long. The stage was set for the next chapter of this conflict. A chapter that would see the entrance of a new player on the battlefield. One that would drastically alter the course of the Korean War. Just when it seemed like the war was nearing its end, a new player entered the fray. As the autumn leaves began to fall in 1950, the winds of change blew across the Korean Peninsula. The United Nations and South Korean forces, under the banner of freedom and democracy, were making steady progress, pushing the North Korean troops towards the Yalu River, the boundary between North Korea and China. But the tranquility of the river was about to be shattered. China, a burgeoning superpower, was watching the events unfold with growing concern. The prospect of a united pro-Western Korea on its doorstep was a threat Beijing could not ignore. Thus, in late October under the leadership of Chairman Mao Zedong, China decided to intervene. They called it the War to Resist U.S. Aggression and Aid Korea. The intervention was not a mere show of support for their ideological ally North Korea, but a strategic move to safeguard their national interests. The Chinese People's Volunteer Army, led by General Peng Daewai, entered the war with a surprise attack. The UN forces caught off guard were forced to retreat. The Chinese troops using tactics of stealth, camouflage and night attacks, managed to push the UN and South Korean forces back across the 38th parallel, the original boundary between North and South Korea. The Chinese intervention changed the dynamics of the war. The UN forces, who were on the brink of victory, found themselves back to square one. The war was no longer a civil conflict, but had transformed into a full-blown international war, with superpowers clashing on the Korean soil. The entry of China into the war was a game-changer. It not only prolonged the war but also escalated it to a new level of intensity and complexity. It was a stark reminder that the Cold War was not just a battle of ideologies, but also a struggle for global dominance among superpowers. The intervention of China breathed new life into the North Korean forces. The war, which seemed to be nearing its end, was far from over. The battlefield was reset, the players were reshuffled, and the stakes were higher than ever. The war had once again reached a stalemate. The war was now a game of tug of war with neither side willing to let go. The Korean War had reached a stalemate, a deadlock and the battle lines were drawn along the 38th parallel. This invisible line dividing the Korean peninsula had become the symbol of a divided nation, a nation at war with itself. Stalemates are often seen as a pause, a moment of respite in a war. But for the people of Korea, this was far from a break. The cities on both sides of the 38th parallel continued to bear the brunt of the conflict. Buildings lay in ruins, streets were scarred by the marks of war, and the people, the people, lived in a constant state of fear and uncertainty. What was once a bustling, vibrant cityscape was now a grim reminder of the cost of war. Yet, amidst the devastation there was a glimmer of hope. The stalemate had brought with it the beginnings of peace negotiations. Leaders from both sides, along with their international allies, began to sit down at the negotiation table. These talks were not easy. Each side held firmly to their beliefs, their demands, and their vision for a post-war Korea. The discussions were heated, the disagreements many, but the fact that they were talking, that they were seeking a diplomatic resolution, was a step in the right direction. However, the road to peace was far from smooth. As the negotiations continued, so did the conflict. The cities remained in ruins, the people continued to live in fear, and soldiers on both sides continued to lose their lives. The stalemate had become a paradox, a time of peace talks and ongoing warfare. But peace was not as simple as signing a document. The negotiations would continue for many months, the stalemate would persist, and the people of Korea would continue to live in the shadow of a war that seemed to have no end. Yet even in the darkest of times the hope for peace remained, a beacon of light in a time of turmoil. The war was over, but the peace was uneasy. The year was 1953, and after three grueling years of conflict, 
the Korean War finally came to a halt. But it wasn't a victorious declaration of peace, it was an armistice, a ceasefire, a pause in the fighting that was intended to be temporary but has lasted for more than seven decades. The armistice was signed on July 27, 1953, marking an end to the active combat. It was a fragile peace, one that could be shattered at any moment. And with it, the Korean Peninsula was divided along the 38th parallel, a line that would serve as the boundary between North and South Korea. This division gave birth to the Korean Demilitarized Zone, a two-and-a-half-mile-wide buffer zone stretching across the peninsula. It stands as a stark reminder of a war that never truly ended. Yet the armistice did not bring about a resolution. The tension between North and South Korea continues to persist, a silent war fought in the shadows of diplomacy and political maneuvering. The Korean War may have ended on paper, but on the ground, in the hearts and minds of those living on either side of the divide, it is a conflict that remains unresolved. From the ashes of the war, both nations embarked on separate paths. South Korea blossomed into a modern democratic nation, while North Korea descended into a totalitarian regime. The armistice may have stopped the bullets and bombs, but it did not heal the wounds, and the scars of the war still run deep. The Korean War was over, but its effects are still felt today. The armistice and its aftermath serve as a poignant reminder of a war that shaped the course of history, a conflict that divided a nation and a people. It is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, a story of survival and hope amidst the ruins of war. So what were the key takeaways from the Korean War? The Korean War, a pivotal event in the history of the 20th century, was a three-year conflict that unfolded from 1950 to 1953 with North and South Korea at its epicenter. The war was sparked by North Korea's invasion of South Korea, a move that set the stage for a protracted battle with profound human and geopolitical implications. The division of Korea along the 38th parallel, a legacy of World War II, played a significant role in the conflict's genesis. This division not only marked a geographical divide, but also symbolized differing ideologies, with the North leaning towards communism and the South towards democracy. As the war unfolded, the involvement of international powers became apparent. The United Nations forces, primarily led by the United States, sided with South Korea, while China, along with the Soviet Union, backed North Korea. This international involvement underscored the global significance of the war and its connection to the broader Cold War tensions. The war took a dramatic turn with the intervention of China. Their entry into the conflict transformed the Korean War from a civil war into a broader international conflict, one that had significant implications for the global balance of power. The war culminated in a stalemate, leading to negotiations and the signing of an armistice in 1953. This armistice established the Korean Demilitarized Zone, a buffer zone that continues to separate the two Koreas to this day. However, the lack of a formal peace treaty means the war technically remains unresolved, a testament to the enduring complexities of this conflict. The Korean War had a devastating impact on Korean cities and resulted in significant casualties and displacement of people. Yet, it's essential to remember that the Korean War was not merely a historical event confined to the past. It was, and remains, a reflection of the global political climate its echoes still resonating in present-day international relations. The Korean War was not just a war but a reflection of the global political climate at the time. Understanding history helps us understand our present and potentially our future. The Korean War, a three-year conflict that saw the involvement of various international powers, remains a poignant part of our world's history. It's a testament to the complexity of international relations, a stark reminder of the cost of ideological differences. Even today the echo of this war resonates especially in the context of ongoing tensions on the Korean Peninsula. The unresolved status of this war, the frozen conflict, continues to shape geopolitical dynamics. It's a chapter of history that encourages us to reflect on the importance of peace, of dialogue, and of understanding. By delving into the past, we gain insights that can guide our steps towards a more harmonious future. So, let's continue this journey of exploration, of understanding, together. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, History Facts, for more insightful videos like this. Until next time, keep exploring history.